Hello everyone, welcome to the video on most important adverse effects of cardiovascular drugs. I will explain adverse effects class wise. Please prepare notes regarding this. These are all very important ones. Let us see class by class. The first one is beta blockers. Beta blockers are very popular agents which are used to treat various diseases, hypertension, angina pectoris, arrhythmia, in certain conditions of congestive heart failure. All of them can be treated by beta blockers. But the major adverse effects are understand beta blockers block beta receptors on the heart. So heart rate is reduced. When heart rate is reduced, blood circulation to the peripheral organs is reduced. When blood circulation to the peripheral organs are reduced, it may cause fatigue, weakness. So one of the major adverse effects is fatigue. Exercise intolerance. That means people who take these beta blockers, they cannot do exercise because to do exercise, muscles need blood supply. The blood supply is decreased because heart rate is decreased. So understand these things, fatigue and then exercise intolerance and then see beta blockers are contraindicated for decompensated congestive heart failure. In decompensated congestive heart failure, cardiac output is reduced. If you use beta blockers, they further worsen the condition, hence they are contraindicated. Similarly, to treat variant angina also, variant angina or principal angina is because of vasospasm. Blood vessels get contracted and blood supply to the heart is reduced. To treat that vasodilator should be used not beta blockers. So remember these points regarding beta blockers. Fatigue, exercise intolerance, they are contraindicated in decompensated congestive heart failure and variant angina. In certain rare conditions, they also cause a condition called as Reynolds, fin Reynolds syndrome. Reynolds syndrome means to the peripheral organs, blood supply is reduced. That is a little bit rare condition. Moving to the next group, calcium channel blockers. See, calcium channel blockers, they cause vasodilation. As a rule, all vasodilators has got common adverse effects. Ta reflex tachycardia and edema formation. Understand this one. When blood vessel is dilated, BP goes down. Body recognizes this hypotension through baroreceptors and chemoreceptors and try, try to regain the hypertension. So to do that, it increases heart rate. That is what is called as reflex tachycardia. Again, it accumulates fluid so that blood volume is increased. Uh, blood pressure will become normalized. So edema, reflex tachycardia are common adverse effects of all vasodilators. In addition to that, calcium channel blockers also cause <clears throat> gingival hyperplasia. The gingival gums of the teeth will get uh, swollen. That is called a gingival hyperplasia. Now virabamil has got uh, constipation as an adverse effect. Moving to the next class, ACE inhibitors, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. The See, ACE inhibitors are very popular group and very cardioprotective group. They are used to treat congestive heart failure, hypertension uh, in, in various conditions. Now, ACE inhibitors, they inhibit angiotensin converting enzyme. Along with that, they also inhibit bradykinin metabolism. So, bradykinin metabolism is inhibited. So, bradykinin levels are increased. Bradykinin causes vasodilation. If vasodilation is there, it may cause angioedema. Blood vessels, swollen blood vessels are there. Dry cough. So, these two are the major problem with the ACE inhibitors. Angioedema, dry cough and ACE inhibitors are contraindicated in pregnant women. They should not be given to pregnant women. This angioedema dry cough is only because of ACE inhibitors. So to avoid that problem, ARBs, angiotensin receptor blockers like sartens can be used. So that is there. So three classes are done. Now the next class, alpha receptor antagonist, alpha 1 antagonist like prejosin, terajosin, doxajosin. All of them they cause blood vessel dilation, vasodilation. So they cause profuse hypotension because when blood vessels are dilated, all the blood uh, the pressure inside the blood vessel will fall down. The major problem with alpha uh, 1 antagonists is they may cause orthostatic hypotension. Orthostatic means in a standing position people will get hypotension because when blood vessel is dilated all blood falls down and brain do not have enough blood circulation that is called as orthostatic hypotension. That may cause syncope fall down also. To avoid this, these drugs are given during bedtime. They are known as bedtime drugs. So this is about alpha uh, antagonist. Now, Coming to diuretics, uh, loop diuretics has a common adverse effects that is ototoxicity. You know, aminoglycosides has also got ototoxicity. Loop diuretics also, has also got ototoxicity as an adverse effect. Spironolactone, it is a aldosterone antagonist. It may cause gynecomastia. Uh, in, in men, it, it is a problem, gynecomastia. Now, coming to individual drugs. Individual drugs like minoxidil causes hypertrichosis, increased uh, uh, follicle formation, hair formation. Uh, this is in fact used as an advantageous to treat alopecia. Alopecia means male pattern baldness. The baldness to treat that minoxidil can be used. Now next one, reserpine. Now see, reserpine, uh, 
what reserpine does it it replaces noradrenaline from the vesicle in the neuron norepinephrine is stored in the vesicle when reserpine is taken it goes inside the vesicle and replaces norepinephrine so whenever there is a neuron stimulation is there the vesicle releases reserpine not norepinephrine so it causes profuse uh, depletion of norepinephrine which may cause depression if you remember there is a hypothesis called as monoamine hypothesis according to that hypothesis depression is caused by decreased levels of monoamine neurotransmitters like serotonin dopamine and norepinephrine so this decreased norepinephrine may cause prolonged depression that is the reason why reserpine is not very much preferred there is an another group is there called organic nitrates or organic nitrovasodilators like glyceryl trinitrate and everything they cause vasodilation so they cause uh, redness or uh, flushing uh, the redness is because of vasodilation this may also cause headache severe headache may be there now another thing with organic nitrovasodilators is they have high amount of first pass effect uh, they when they are taken orally they get into portal circulation and they get metabolized now the second one is they cause tachyphylaxis tachyphylaxis means rapid emergence of tolerance rapid emergence of tolerance means if you take two of the uh, nitrovasodilators in short intervals the drug effect is very much minimized so as a rule at least there should be eight hour interval between two doses so this is what is there with organic nitrovasodilators so this is about uh, most important adverse effects of cardiovascular drugs thank you for watching this video